Hello everyone and welcome back to the new Prehistoric King Dev Diary for August. So we didn't actually get one in July, but we can now see what they've been working on. So there's a little bit to cover in this one, so a few things for update 12 and a little bit for the future. So let's get into it. So since the last Dev Diary, the team has been working to address a number of sore spots reported by new players and to improve on what was introduced in update 12. To start off with, camera controls for panning and rotation will be updated to better support laptop users with new optional keybinds, including a toggle that switches the Q and E keys from raising, lowering the camera to rotating it left and right instead. In terms of onboarding, we have also completed a unified objective system and will allow, that will allow us to finishing implementing tutorials, notifications, and the park issues list shown in the previous dev diary. So in this image, there is actually something right there. One of our new dinosaurs that we will get to in a little bit. So notifications and park issues have been running internally for a little while now, which means most of the remaining focus is going to tutorials and making them intuitive. For example, if you're playing through a tutorial, there will be some fancy new highlights that direct you around the UI. Excitingly, this objective system has also been built in with scenario missions or quests in mind. The idea of integrating more characters as occasional quest givers is something that the team has wanted to do for a while, so it's nice to have some of that infrastructure in place. Now we're going to take a look at the new species profiles that have been released for the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus. The name Apatosaurus means deceptive lizard, and I can't think of a more fitting moniker for a dinosaur with such a complicated history. For the longest time, nobody knew what the head of Apatosaurus looked like. Paleontologists debated over whether it should look more like a Diplodocus or a Camarasaurus, until its real skull was confirmed in 1978. Now that's turning heads. That sound you're hearing isn't thunder, it's the earth-shaking stomp of a brontosaurus. These dinosaurs have been shaking the big screen for over a hundred years, starting with one of the first ever animated films, Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie was never the best behaved dinosaur, so hopefully we won't have as much trouble trying to keep this brontosaurus in line. Well, we also got the reveal of the, our second species in Update 12, or at least a much better look at it, Ankylosaurus. So the walking tank Ankylosaurus will be waddling its way into Prehistoric Kingdom in Update 12. This armored dinosaur features rows of large protective osteoderms and a club tail perfect for battering the shins of deserving predators everywhere. Alongside its much older relative, Solidosaurus, this will be the second Tharia foreign added to Prehistoric Kingdom. Yeah, I'm looking forward to many more as well. Hopefully Stegosaurus at some point. But yeah, Ankylosaurus looks great here. And we also got an um, image of it living in a sort of wetland habitat. And yeah, this skin's looking really nice. This, this cool mossy green. I, I feel like the skin was also called mossy um, originally, but I can't really recall. But I'm looking forward to seeing many of the other skins as well. As I'm excited to see what they have come up with. So moving on to a few other things. So what's a zoo if the visitors can't see properly? Update 12 will be bringing a variety of back-end improvements to guest visibility that better supports extremely large and small exhibits. Visitors will also show more realistic crowding behaviors as they try to congregate closer to where visible animals are. This does mean that since guests can see animals from further away, some visitors will take advantage of elevated terrain or view from a distance foot rather than always standing directly next to the viewing areas. Foliage, fences, scenery and buildings can be used to block guest sight lines and create a more curated experience, just like a real zoo. When Update 12 releases, there will be many changes made to alleviate some of the efficiency woes experienced by players. Staff will not only carry more resources, but will also queue up multiple tasks at a time. 
This means that keepers will be able to refill multiple feeders in a single trip, picking the shortest path between all destinations if possible. Inside the staff management menu, players will eventually have the option to set the maximum skill level their employees can train up to. By training at the staff centre in their spare time, a worker can increase their skill level, unlocking perks that boost their efficiency depending on their role. These, oh hang on, that's not part of the same sentence, damn it. Depending on their role, these perks may come in the form of buffs, such as reducing the time it takes to gather resources. Each job type has preset perks depending on a worker's skill level. There is no RNG. As employees increase their skill, they'll bump up into a higher wage bracket. The salary tab can be used to adjust the minimum and maximum pay for staff across the park. Increasing pay will improve staff welfare and might make workers more willing to put up with poor conditions, while reducing it can lead to people quitting. Sounds a little bit like uh, Plant Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution 2 in that regard, which both games have a pretty good management system in my personal opinion, although it can't be approved. We'll be adding similar salary-like controls to the finances menu, eventually letting players set the entry ticket or amenity prices park-wide. They're also considering scaling down the economy for readability and balance purposes, making 100,000 worth as much as a million in the current game. That's pretty cool. I'd also like to address that this is actually uh, future stuff, so it's not in update 12 as, well, it is concept art, so yeah, this will be probably in update 13 or 14 even. Now I know something people have been all excited for since it was first announced, the babies. Yes, the team is still working on them. Between creating and implementing all the new species that have arrived this year, they have been working on the assets for ontogeny where, where they can. They are currently making their way through painting a lot of baby skins, creating blend shapes for all the growth stages and prototyping animations. Oh, so I'd really like to see Jurassic World Evolution 2 and Plant Zoo to do this. I'd love to see ontogeny in both those games. So they're working on it, but it'll take some time to do properly as it'll not only touch every animal, but all the related animal systems, both in terms of gameplay and on the technical side like AI, locomotion, inverse kinematics, etc. For this month, however, please enjoy this early look at the baby Apatosaurus blend shapes. It's using a temporary baby skin and a normal map, but the final design shouldn't be too far off. Well, it looks really nice. It, it does remind me of a couple of the sauropod skins, actually, in Jurassic World Evolution 2, but yeah, it looks really nice. And you can see they are, are a lot smaller than the adult Apatosaurus. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they blend to, well, create that giant sauropod. To cap out the dev diary, there is a tiny bit of animal AI news. Throughout August, the team have been working on that animal awareness system. When it's finished, this will let animals effectively see and hear their surroundings, recognizing and prioritizing entities based on their size, loudness, etc. Basically, this will allow animals to determine whether a predator is approaching, like these Aranosaurus with this T-Rex. So think of it as a gateway to more requested behaviours like fleeing and conversing between animals. Once it's finished, there will be a lot of exciting stuff to build on top of it. And I can't wait honestly, that is going to be so cool. Fleeing and conversing, but also it could lead to the predator and prey. Although I guess that's kind of into fleeing. But yeah, the predator and prey relationship there, where a herd of dinosaurs notices the predator and then judges their next move based on where that predator is so yeah that was our august dev diary a lot of exciting stuff coming and yeah the ankylosaurus looks fantastic the brontosaurus and apatosaurus look fantastic in game and yeah a lot of new management features coming in update 12 as well i mean on the trello it says that there's going to be a new map i think it was and a new modular theme however we haven't really seen much on that yet so i think this is going to be an update for the end of the year and uh yeah however behind the scenes i have also seen well outside the videos i have seen um a little bit of new stuff like um i think gallimimus is supposed to come in update 15 um i, I saw from uh people i know and uh 
I think I also saw in some concept art for an, an updated nursery menu on their Trello board that Ichi, which is a bizarre flying dinosaur, as well as Allosaurus fragilis, at least Allosaurus fragilis, are coming in a future update. So that's going to be really exciting. I've, Allosaurus is my favorite dinosaur, and I'm looking forward to seeing all three species that they plan to introduce. Although I feel like they could actually do four species. Um, I think there's uh, Jim Madzen, Jim Madzenai, or or something. I'm not sure, but uh, there's uh, there's many types of Allosaurus, and I think they're adding Saurophaganax as a um, separate species there, or something. But yeah. Let me know what your thoughts are on the current news for Prehistoric Kingdom and what you're excited for with Update 12 and the future. As, as for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Starting with one of the first ever animated films, Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie was never the best behaved dinosaur, so hopefully we won't have as much trouble trying to keep this Brontosaurus in line.